Hello friends, welcome to the channel. Today I bring to you a science fiction thriller story called Spectre. It is centered on a special ops team that is dispatched to fight supernatural beings. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In the opening scene, we see a soldier hurriedly moving through the devastated ruins of a city. His name is Davis. Using his comm link, Davis asks how long for the backup to arrive. He is told it will arrive in around 10 minutes and is advised to stay put. But Davis ignores the orders and proceeds to investigate. He switches on his special night goggles and starts moving forward carefully. He enters a building room and sees bodies all over the place. He sees some strange disturbance and reports it to the headquarters. Suddenly something touches him and he dies instantly on contact. In the next scene, we see a man scavenging for parts in a junkyard. His name is Dr. Klein. He is the lead engineer who works in a military defense lab and designs defense equipments. He is working on a new type of gun which fires an energy beam. His demonstration of the gun goes well and is asked to proceed with further tests. His superior tells Klein that the general wants to meet Klein to discuss something sensitive. Scene cuts to Moldova military air base. They are currently in war with the resistance forces. General Orland shows him the footage from one of the head cams Klein had developed and Klein immediately notices something strange. He sees an anomaly which is unexplainable with the current data in hand. He is asked to sign a confidentiality agreement before he can be given classified information. We are introduced to Fran, who is a CIA agent. Klein is then shown video footage of Davis's cam before he died. Fran tells him that the locals are calling these unexplained unnatural anomalies as Eritere meaning the ghost of war. She tells Klein that all dead had their internal organs frozen but their skin was burned. He asks the general that to investigate the issue, he would need more data and that involves getting a better recording of the anomaly. He shows the general a more powerful hyperspectral camera which can be mounted on an armored vehicle and can be used to take high resolution videos of the anomaly. The team of soldiers are pissed off at him for removing the mounted machine gun and replacing it with camera but they accept the change sensing the importance of the task. Next morning they have a briefing of the mission and their target is a five-story building where the last team went missing. They are told that the enemy might be wearing an advanced cloaking technology and should attempt to bring it back intact if encountered. They leave in five armored vehicles and reach the spot. The team starts scanning the building one floor after another. They see a dead soldier from Utah team and observe none of the bodies show any bullet entry or exit wounds. They finally reach the fifth floor. They observe something moving under the bathtub and find Sergeant Comstock from Utah team alive and disoriented. While Comstock tells them about how his team died, the rest of the soldiers reach the top floor and see the whole Utah team soldiers dead bodies. One of the soldiers observes a smear in his goggles view but it turns out to be the hyperspectral anomaly they were searching for. The spectral kills the soldier and the rest of the team rushes to the spot. One by one, the spectral starts killing the soldiers just by touching them. The soldiers try to shoot it down but the bullets are useless against it. They are ordered to fall back. The last group of soldiers get cornered in the building. As they try to climb down the outside wall of building using ropes, the spectral starts killing them. The mounted camera gets jammed so Klein goes out and handles it himself. He is able to get a very clear shot of the spectral on his camera. The remaining soldiers climb into the truck and they rush out of the spot. A mine blows up and the trucks overturn forcing them to come out and run on foot. They run into an abandoned building and try to contact base but the link fails. The soldiers figure out that they are not dealing with an active camouflage using enemy. It is definitely something supernatural against which their current weapons are useless. 19 of their team members have been killed since the start and they have no idea what that thing is. They turn to Klein for answers. Klein tells them that he saw a human form, and it was conscious as it looked at Klein but is unable to explain what it is. They set up the camera to look outside and see lot more spectral things trying to enter the building but are repelled back by some kind of barrier made of black sand. Klein figures out that those are iron fillings and someone deliberately put them there to stop the spectrals from coming in the building. They start searching the building and find two kids. The sibling kids tell them that there is no one else in the building. The soldiers are able to contact base using a transmission tower in the building. Base tells them to come to a rendezvous point a few blocks from their current location from where they can be evacuated. They start planning how they will cover that distance in such a hostile environment. Klein sees bins filled with iron filings and suggests that he can rig up some weapons using iron filings which seem to be the only thing stopping the spectrals. He also comes up with an idea of turning the hyperspectral camera into a spotlight which can help everyone see the spectrals 
controls in daylight. But what you're gonna need is a device. He also instructs the base on how to modify the cameras and weapons. Klein switches on the camera turn spotlight and they see a lot of spectrals on the building adjacent to their building. Suddenly the spectrals start jumping on the electrical poles between the two buildings in a plan to enter their building. The soldiers come out of the building and start their run towards the extraction point with the spectrals chasing them. The backup team arrives with tanks and choppers to save them. They fire tank shells at the building in which the spectrals have assembled but nothing happens to them. Spectrals start killing the soldiers. One of the spectrals tries to hit the tank but is unable to pass through the tank metal wall even after several attempts. Klein witnesses this whole event between the spectral and the tank. One of the kids is also killed by the spectral. The helicopter lands and everyone starts to board. The spectrals try to move towards the helicopter but the high winds from the rotor slows their advance. Klein breaks the jars of iron filings he was carrying on his belt. The iron filings are sprayed on the spectrals and they scream in pain. The helicopter leaves them outside a heavily armored building controlled by the rebels. Right now, the enemy is not rebels but the spectrals so everyone works together. The girl kid tells them that her father worked at the Mazarov power plant from where the Aratair came from. General Orland also arrives and gives them bad news about the outside situation. Most of the forces have been killed and only a handful remain. There is no way of escaping and they are stuck here. Klein tells General that he has finally figured it out what those spectrals are and how to stop them. He tells them his observations. He says that the spectrals are not able to cross through ceramic material thinking about the bathtub earlier which was ceramic and the tank which is also coated with ceramic material. He concludes that these spectrals are man-made things made out of a man-made material named condensate, a state of matter that was predicted by Bose and Einstein. Klein mentions that he can modify the equipment which they have to make some kind of energy beam weapon which should help them in fight against those spectrals. He even modifies a mechanical robot Rottweiler to carry the torch spotlight. Klein figures out that those spectrals are being fed by a lot of energy from the power plant and if they are somehow able to shut down the energy source inside the power plant, it may stop those spectrals. It is a one-way ticket as the helicopters only have enough fuel to take them there. It's a do or die situation. The general gives them a moral boosting talk before they set out for the final showdown. The board the helicopters and fly towards the power plant. The aerial view shows the whole city is burning down. A small team lands at the power plant site first to test out the new weapons to see if they even work against the spectrals. They spot some spectrals on the far end and set up their gun. As a spectral charges towards them, he fires the gun which kills the spectral. The soldier confirms the kill to the rest of the team and gives them a go ahead to land. All of them are pumped up after hearing this good news. A fierce battle starts on the spot between the soldiers and spectrals. One of the helicopter lands at the top of the building with Klein, Fran, major sessions to disrupt the power source. They go down a hatch using ropes. When they reach the bottom, a spectral attacks them in major sessions and one more soldier defend against it while Fran and Klein go inside the core area of the building. The soldiers outside seem to be gaining an upper hand in the battle. Klein and Fran locate the lab inside the power plant. On entering they see lots of dead bodies most probably of the scientists working in the lab Klein observes that they were scanning real people and printing them out of condensate material. They figure out that the spectrals are some kind of weapon the enemy was creating but somehow the containment chambers broke and the spectrals escaped. Outside, the disintegrated spectrals combine together to form one big spectral which seems unstoppable by the soldiers' weapons. Fran tells Klein that he needs to pull out the wire connections and kill the switch which will stop the power flow to spectrals killing them instantly. Due to heavy firing the structure is taking a lot of damage and the container chambers which still have some spectral traps start cracking. Klein starts to release the wire connections one by one. Meanwhile outside, the giant spectral is getting out of control and is about to kill all soldiers. One of the spectral escapes from its container chamber but Fram is able to kill it with the gun. The soldiers fire the most powerful gun they have which leads to huge vibrations and all the container chambers break leading to all spectrals getting free. They rush towards Klein but Klein is able to turn the kill switch in time. The spectrals start to slowly disintegrate into thin air after loss of the power connection to their neural network. On their way out, Klein and friends stumble upon another section of the lab which has the actual neural network of actual people which was control each individual spectral. Klein starts to unplug each chamber knowing how dangerous this technology is in wrong hands. Fren asks him not to unplug them so that their scientists can study this experiment but Klein tells her that this is for the best. Everyone returns to the base. He sees soldiers returning to the power plant with a team of scientists to study and reverse engineer the experiments. But Klein says he has had enough and he returns back bidding everyone goodbye. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.